Thank you for tuning into this screencast. I'm Rex Proctor. In this screencast, we're going to take a look at qualifiers. So I'm going to split up my view. I've already created a markup, and we'll whip a timeline down, and we'll close off our sidebar to the left. Now, I'm going to select the John button, and the John button is a clip button. So we know that by the type of the button. Clip buttons mark events in the timeline, so they mark clips. Qualifiers help to describe what occurred in that clip. So it gives you an extra layer of information that you can attribute to the clip. So let's see how these work. I'm going to start up in markup mode and start playing. When I click on the John button, you'll see that that marks the event in the timeline. So it's creating a clip. If I click on a qualifier, A1, that inserts a qualifier into that clip at the moment that I pressed that button down. Let's give it a second one. We'll go with B2 and then we'll end the clip. Now if we hover over that you'll notice that the pop-up shows us that we've attributed that clip with two qualifiers A1 and B2. If I select the clip in the clip qualifier editor over in the inspector you can see that we've got quality A1 quality B2 so two different qualifiers if you want to remove those you can right click and you can delete the qualifier or you can manually add new ones or you can add it to a filter so if I want to add that to the filter it's going to filter it in quality isn't that interesting but there's a, a few little options underneath there the main thing that you want to be aware of is that the qualifiers have a time attribute. So when you click on them, they actually mark exactly when that qualifier occurred in the movie. If you want to adjust that time, you hold shift and you can click and drag and tune that up to exactly when the qualifier occurred inside of the video. This is very powerful when you're using our qualifier CSV export great for Excel numbers and Tableau type workflows. So let's mark up a few more here. Let's do a Bob one, B1, A2, and that. Go back to John. Go back to Bob. I just want to insert a few of these so we have something to show how the filtering works off of this. Now, one little behavior I want to share with you about qualifiers. If I end John, the last button that was pushed up, meaning it, it was inserted into the timeline, any of the qualifiers will automatically be inserted in those unless they have a private link. So if I want to attribute a qualifier in the last clip that I ended for John, I press B1. And you'll see that that gets inserted in the middle of the clip. Since the clip cursor is outside of the clip, we don't know exactly where to insert that. So it goes at the midpoint of the clip. And you can continue to add other qualifiers to that. It actually splits the difference between the last one added and keeps sort of dwindling down there. But again, you can get in there and you can adjust those times like that if you want to be accurate. Now, why the qualifiers are so important is because they give you hooks in which to filter. So again, if I want to add A2 to the filter, I can either type it in the filter box or I can go here and add to filter. And you can see that two of the clips have been filtered out because filtering filters in and they're dimmed out um, and that reduces the count for the clips in the row and also affects exports. So we can continue to add more. We're going to use a Boolean combination of AND. And if I'm looking for A2 and B1, I can type in B-1 and that will filter in. So it looks like three clips have that. Let's continue. Uh, let's try B2. And you can see now we've got one clip that contains B2 and A2.